Hello everybody and welcome back to F1 2022 Manager and we're here for the French Grand Prix and in the last episode, well we had a, a great race from Nico Hülkenberg, a disappointing race really from Sebastian Vettel but we had some rules votes and uh, it didn't get in, the, the rule that we wanted didn't get put in place and therefore there is still a bonus point for fastest lap and the only reason we didn't want it is because we're never setting the fastest lap but yes it's uh, not much else to report really we manufactured everything we wanted to we're waiting for some uh some chance to do a new design or research project but generally the car's performing pretty well uh facility wise we haven't got enough money to upgrade anything at the moment so it's all sort of staying as it is which is a little bit uh annoying let's say it's a little bit annoying but um overall i am pretty happy with how the save is going and how we are progressing along and it's going well still don't know what we're going to do for drivers next year um no idea what's going to happen with seb no idea what's going to happen with nico who does have a point and it will go into braking um vesti I, I, I don't know that's also going to go into braking for vesti and yeah i'm just not sure we got our new um uh, head of aerodynamics in no our new race no our new Head of aerodynamics, I'll, I'll get there eventually. Um, Esteban Chaditu, who is, uh, yeah, just settling in to his new role, which is nice. Uh, we're still looking to replace our technical chief. Race engineers, uh, he's got a point as well. So, do we go into feedback or do we go into pit crew management? The ability to effectively communicate with and prepare the pit crew during a race. A higher rating means faster pit stops. That will do lovely. Thank you very much. And that increases him to an 81 overall. And uh, Ben Mitchell doesn't have a point just yet. So... Yeah, I mean it's all going, it's all going pretty well. We're we're, we're improving tire changes. Uh, tire and change mistakes have a low likelihood of occurring, but cost a long delay, which is fine. I think we may change it now to front and rear jacks. Improves the speed of jacking the car up during a pit stop and reduces the likelihood of jacks mistakes. Jack delays have a moderate likelihood of occurring, but cost a short delay during pit stops. Uh, wing adjustment improves the ability to replace the front wing during a pit stop. We haven't really utilised that much. Reduces the chance of releasing a car too early or incorrectly during a pit stop. Car release mistakes have a high likelihood of occurring and cost a moderate delay. Well, we're going to improve that because I think risk and reward, that has a high likelihood of happening with a moderate delay. Whereas everything else is a high likelihood and a long delay, but we don't care about wings. Tire changes is low likelihood, but long delay. Front and rear jacks, moderate, but short delay. And then we, I don't care about balance. Car releases, yeah, huge. That's what we're going for. Car release. Um... Yes, I don't know why we wouldn't uh, improve that. If you've got a game, I would suggest you go on car release because that has the highest benefits. Anyway, into the French Grand Prix. I'll do practice. We'll be back for qualifying as per usual. Catch you in a bit. So into qualifying, we go for the French Grand Prix. And uh, yeah, wonderful setups. 99% confidence for Seb, 95 for Nico. So again, I am sort of predicting that... Um, we're going to do pretty well in qualifying. I think one of them should get top 15 or, well, 15th and above, I guess, or 14th and above, 15th and above. Uh, but we do need to make sure that we put the good engines and powertrain systems back into the car because they are getting quite a beating through uh, through all of the the practice sessions and the, the, the warm-ups and things like that. They are getting a little bit of a beating so we just need to make sure we stay on top of it and change them back when we get to the race day because i i think we're quite close to having um a a failure in a practice session i mean look at this we've got three gearboxes down to 30 ish percent 24 23 38 so we're getting close to a point where we're gonna even run out of practice session gearboxes uh, and that's something we have to keep an eye on but we're going to go into qualifying, uh, both drivers, good setups, good confidence, uh, the car's looking like it's pretty good to be honest. Right, we're going to send out Nico first, and we do. I do like these little cutscenes, they're very, very good, and the Aston Martin is a nice looking car, I will admit that, I do like the Aston Martin for how it looks. So let's get onto the overview map, there is the Paul Ricard circuit, it is incredibly long and straight. Um, not my favourite, not my favourite circuit, I don't mind it, it's terrible to drive on F1 because I always get confused by all the other circuits that are laid out on the track, but yeah, there we go, that's a little bit of history of my love-hate relationship with uh, Paul Ricard, as a couple of other drivers going out, Perez and Ricardo. Hamilton goes out as well, we're going to send, uh, we'll send Vettel out now, Hulkenberg should have enough space between all of them to not catch them on a fast lap, that's the plan, because 
He is going to be steaming down. Y your tyres are overeating. Bloody hell, it's qualifying, mate. Just take a chill pill. Take a chill pill. Hulkenberg flying down the straights is uh, approaching on Vettel, but should be fine. And hopefully Vettel will have enough time to get his lap in as well. Hulkenberg has really caught Vettel on this flying lap. And is Vettel going to hold him up? Yes. Yes, he is. Quite considerably. But now... Um, Hulkenberg currently sets the fastest lap of a 1.33, which is which is good fun. Okay, so soft tyres around here are going to overheat very, very quickly. As this is the first lap, uh, we don't need to really pay attention to this one. It's just banking a time in, getting a time set as Vettel goes third. Let's end it now. Red flag the session. We'll definitely have um, this as third place, at least. That would be absolutely lovely. Lots of traffic happening here. We will reconfigure this and get... Well, do we keep on those softs? No, Nico's so bad. Let's just use another soft. He's he's not got through once, has he? So we'll uh, we'll put we'll put those softs on. Confirm that little change. Get him ready. As uh, Seb is now in as well, so we'll put Seb on. I I just think Seb could probably get through on those tires, but is it worth the risk? Is it worth the risk? He's done a one thirty three four one nine on those tires. Um, let's just make sure I don't miss the time too fast. 131.8. Let's not risk it. Let's get the bonus payout. So put him on fresh tyres and uh, and go from there. And then we just wait and play the waiting game. I just want to make sure I put those softs on. I did. Yes, good. Um, and then play the waiting game until... Well, basically, I mean, again, we could go again and get two or three laps done in this one. But I don't feel like it's ultimately necessary. At the moment, so one once everyone started doing, I mean, you've got a few people that are staying out for two, two flying laps in one session, which is understandable on a, on a circuit like Paul Ricard. But at the moment, I mean, Leclerc is just about to set a time, probably jump straight to the top. So let's just slow this down again. So with six minutes to go. Uh, below us is Schumacher, Albon, Latifi, and Russell. They're all below Hulkenberg. Although Russell is just on his fast lap now, so he'll probably jump ahead. Vettel has got quite a number of people below him, but I'm going to suggest that a lot of these people got stuck in traffic. So I think we just play the uh, we play the waiting game, and we try and go out again last on track like we did uh, in the previous episode, I think. I think we actually timed it really well to get around. See, Russell doing another stint, or is this his cool... Oh, no, that's his cooldown lap, isn't it? He'll be in his cooldown lap, so... I'm expecting Russell to come in, but then I'm not... I don't think Russell's going to be able to get out again, to be honest. Because there's only three... There's going to be about three and a half minutes by the time he's in. A bit less, actually, just seeing the time I go down. And now, right, so people are starting to leave now. Hamilton is out. Verstappen is out. So we've just got to remember that Russell won't be going. Lots of people leaving the pit lane now. Oh, Russell is going back out again. They managed to uh, sort out his tyres and everything. Signs is out. So we're going to send Holkenberg. Then we'll send Vettel. And we're going to have, oh, again, it's the I mean, same every time, isn't it? The Alfa Romeos. It's always Joe and Magnussen that go out last. Bloody hell. Right, let's quickly get around this one then. We will jump on board, as per usual, with Sebastian Vettel, who will be chasing uh, Nico Holkenberg for his fast lap. So... On board we go with Sebastian Vettel in this one. Let's go down to one time speed so that we can see this properly. He is currently safe, but uh, he needs a good lap to be put in this one. That is Nico Hulkenberg in front of us. So both drivers with plenty of space in front of them. Um, free track. The track is, well, the track grip is high. So we should be setting some very, very, very good times here. 1.598 off the leader is Vettel at the moment. Hulkenberg is out. His tyres are overheating, but we're not going to worry about that. It looks like then it's going to be medium to hards or hard to mediums for this. I don't think Paul Ricard eats the tyres up too much, but both drivers confer, uh, complaining of overheating. And Hulkenberg has done a yellow sector. Seb has gone quicker, which is good to see. Very good to see. As we come in a lounge, so the first drivers are crossing the line. Schumacher does not improve. Okay, so Schumacher does not improve at all. Next bunch of drivers are going to be coming over. Uh, Gasly does improve, goes up to sixth place. Then we've got the big boys coming in. Hamilton, fourth. Verstappen stays third, but does hit a lower time. So they're all going to be safe. Norris jumps ahead of Vettel into 12th position, but not too far ahead. Vettel could easily catch him. You remember, we're going to be coming across the line last. Leclerc over. Perez, Verstappen, Hamilton all finish. Gasly in sixth. Alonso sits eighth at the moment. Hulkenberg's dropped down to 18th position as he's going to cross the line any second. 
what can he do? As there's a number of drivers already below Vettel who have finished. So Vettel is through. Hulkenberg improves. Vettel does improve as well. Finishes 12th. Hulkenberg gets 17th. Standard there. Magnussen and Joe both put in a better lap time than Sebastian Vettel, but he is through into Q2 again in P13. Lovely stuff, Seb. And there it is confirmed that Nico Hulkenberg once again is not making it to Q2. Disappointing. So as per usual, we're going to go out on a slightly used set of soft tyres for the first lap in Q2, and then we'll do um, our best lap, let's say, later on in the session on a fresh set of, uh, of soft tyres. So into Q2, Sebastian Vettel goes. And uh, I sort of think, again, we're 15 minutes on a pretty long, long track. I think we're going to not go out super, super early. We're just going to wait and buy our, bide our time, see if we can get potentially a toe off someone. So there is the start of the session, and it is yeah, well, Verstappen going out very early. Is that Verstappen going out? If that's Verst it is Verstappen, we're going to follow Verstappen here. Let's get out there, Seb. Yeah, there we go. Let's uh, let's put in a time alongside Verstappen, shall we? If we can match his times, oh, we'll be laughing. No chance we're going to be doing that. So let's get Seb all the way around. I think is Verstappen going to hit some traffic. We need to get ahead of Norris. We do. Russell's going to hold us up ever so slightly, but we passed him very quickly. Uh, it's two green sectors for Seb. It's another green sector, and well, he's only a second off Verstappen, which isn't too bad, to be honest. Uh, and I think we've held up some other people there, but we'll pro we, we probably won't be getting into the top 10 unless something drastic happens So I feel like we're, we're not we're, we're in a good position getting into Q2 still I do feel like that's how we've just got to manage this at the moment six minutes to go Signs Leclerc stay out Russell stays out as well at the moment We're in 11th, which is will be our best ever uh, qualifying to be honest as Ocon Comes back in. I'm expecting all of these drivers to come in. Bottas comes in. Sainz comes in. Leclerc comes in. And Russell comes in as well. Right, so now it is the waiting game of trying to time this right. And here come all the drivers. So, can we get this right and be the last one out? We're going to try and go after the Alpines. And if we go now, we should still be okay. Because Vettel is out. It's gonna. It's a, it's a. It's a long old lap, and I'm hoping that we've timed this just right. And I think we have timed it very well, indeed. So let's get on board again with Seb, as he's. Uh, he's. Well, actually, I don't. We might not have timed this well. He's got to get around this corner and cross the line within 14 seconds. Yeah, he's gonna do it. Easy, right? We're gonna have the most rubbered in track, and we're gonna have the best chance of getting out. Of Q2 here because we currently sit in 11th faster than Magnus and Sonoda, Norris and Zhou, all who probably got held up on their first laps of the session. But we are looking for green, 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 Seb. That is what we need in this session on this new set of soft tyres. What can you do as you come around the corner into another right hander and then into the unbelievably quick part of uh, Paul Ricard? It is a green sector one, which is good for Sebastian Vettel. Open up the DRS. Let's have a quick check that it is open. And it is good. That's good to see. Fly down this straight. Go into a chicane and then get on another high speed straight as well. Little left. Little right. Down the pedal we go. Cut that corner slightly if you want to. If you're doing the F122 racing line. And uh, yeah, into this straight again. Which isn't a DRS straight. If I remember rightly. It's not. That's what. This is the sort of straight you can just deploy your battery and really hope to pull away. But it's another green sector for Seb. So back-to-back -back green sectors as Norris finishes below us. Joe beats us and jumps ahead. But Norris and Sonoda confirmed to be below us already. What have we else have we got here? Magnussen jumps ahead, but not by much, according to it was our first lap where I think we got held in traffic. I mean, we've got to make up six seconds on Ocon, who hasn't put his best lap in yet as... Uh, I think will be shown pretty now, but we could be in 11th here. We could jump. We could jump Joe. We could jump Joe as he's going to come round into the start finish straight over the line, and Seb sets a time that is exactly the same as Magnussen. Wow, it's exactly the same as Magnussen. Um, I mean quality 13th. I'll take that. I'll take that all day. But look at that. A 133-323. Exactly the same as the Haas. 
Unbelievable. And the Haas gets it because of Q1, I think, if we've got a match time. I think the Haas gets it because their time was one thousandth of a second quicker than us. Unbelievable. Right, here we are then, ready for the race. Uh, we've, we've got the qualifying position, we've reached Q2, so that's 180 grand coming into the bank. Uh, we probably won't get the fastest lap finish position. We've said that, I, I think I've said that we can get uh, 15th. Yeah, I've said we'll get one driver finishing 15th or above. Position game, will we get each driver to finish above their station? What would that give us in terms of, I mean, 249,000 is not to be sniffed at. Yeah, go on, I think we can get... I think we can get everybody uh, above. And then we do have the finish position streak, so hopefully to make that two or four. And the qualifying, if, as long as we keep getting people above 15th, we'll hit the qualifying streak, which is awesome. Right. Uh, let's have a quick look at the circuit. Expected strategies then. Medium to hard. Hard to medium or hard to soft. Okay. Overview. Safety car chance. 67%. And it's about a 27 second pit stop okay good to know all that stuff let's go and sort out some strategies but first off before we do that remember to put a bit more fuel in the car because i love to work that engine really really hard okay strategy um first off let's look a look at a yes it's not it doesn't eat tires too badly um, oh, what am I doing? It's this one I want medium to hards i think we could do that but we don't want to press the hards too much going through i mean we could do for that go try that and go for the undercut again no rain come in here that would give us so a would give us the undercut at the moment b is sort of aligned to an overcut how far can you push on those hards if we go like that and then really hard and get an extra lap or two and then really push the mediums i feel like anyone going on to softs is is gonna have an absolute shocker i think medium to hard is what we go with uh with seb on a Nico, I think we go probably the same, but keep it a little bit more online with what they want. They're saying so that's pit on lap 22, uh, and Seb is pit on lap 21. Yeah, okay, I don't mind that. 21, 22, we, we start again, we start aggressive, and then we manage it as we go. Uh, put it on to deploy. Is that on overtake or deploy? That's on deploy. Yeah, good, because we really want to jump those. If we can get good starts, then we can... Uh, we can jump up a couple of positions and rethink the strategy. Right, here we go. Right, we're at the French Grand Prix with a Alma Ferrari front row. Two Ferraris, two Red Bulls, and uh, oh, an Alpha Tauri's up there, which is interesting. Right, Sebastian Vettel, what have you got for us, lad? What have you got for us? Let's drive on, ride on board. And, uh, well, Vettel's already got Magnussen, which is awesome. And he's up to 11th because he's got Alonso. So... <laughs> He's, well, he's really good at race starts. He has just lost a little space to uh, Alonso there. But up to 12th already. Hulkenberg is uh, he's, he's last. Hulkenberg's last. Oh, he's in an absolute mess of traffic there. Nico Hulkenberg. Let's actually watch this for a little bit. Because uh, if we can get on the good view here, this could be quite some battle. It's three wide. It's three wide into that straight. Oh, my word. Nico slowly pulls away. And uh, he's gained multiple positions up to 18th. Come on, Nico. Work it hard. Work it hard. Aston Martin are moving up the field. Yeah, we saw Hulkenberg gain those positions. So, Nico coming in. He's got the inside on the Williams, but the Williams is going to get back at him. But we should have the engine power and the speed to uh, to get past him. There we go. He's done it. And Vettel is up to 11th getting past Alonso. So, that's a good start for both drivers. Although, Hulkenberg has just got back to where he started. But uh, Vettel is in quite the battle with Alonso. It seems at the moment, and uh, something happened there that it was maybe delayed Seb a little bit because he's just dropped a, he's just dropped back a bit on Alonso. In fact, Alonso being so low down is interesting. It's not he's not normally that that bad. Right, let's have a quick look at strategies. A mix of medium and hard, so it's going to be hard to medium and medium to hard is what everyone's doing there. So uh, excellent. That's what we'll keep an eye on. But for now. Uh, it's still all a little bit congested. Hulkenberg up to 16th, overtaking Lando Norris, which is always uh, fun to see. Although he's uh, now going for a move on Schumacher as well. Hulkenberg is trying. He is trying to keep his feet. Um, he's he's giving me something to think about, for sure. He's giving me something to think about. Although Vettel has now overtaken Bottas into 11th, chasing down uh, Alonso and Ocon. Although someone's run wide in Sector 1. Um, who's dropping down the order? Norris is sort of dropping down. The Sonoda's down there. Oh, that was Russell 
in front of us. Okay, so Russell, oh yeah, not too bad. He just sort of went around, lost a bit of speed, which is going to hold everybody up. We're not far off that. So that has brought Russell into battling territory for uh, when DRS is open. But at the moment, Vettel's sitting behind Alonso. Uh, Hulkenberg sitting behind Ricardo. He's already overtaken one McLaren, so I'd like to think he can get both of them. Okay, so again, both drivers doing it really well. Hulkenberg up to 13th. Vettel up into 9th, getting Alonso and Joe now trying to hunt down um, Esteban Ocon, who's in a battle with George Russell, who again is losing time to Max Verstappen and, and the big boys up the front, where Gasly's sort of just a bit of a marker in there that's letting the two Ferraris get away. Verstappen won't be happy with that, and Red Bull won't. Christian Horner will be losing his shit around that. He really, really will. But uh, Hulkenberg's trying to chase down Bottas. I think we're going to do a bit of uh, ERS management in a sec, where we're going to ask people to harvest, and then we will. Uh, just put on a bit of deploy because we're going to get dragged along in this DRS train there's no worries of losing that at the moment but yeah we're doing very well in the first five laps okay so we've done a good job of charging the battery for Seb so he's now going to have a go as he comes around this corner onto these fast straights I'm hoping that the deploying the battery is really going to help him out and Hulkenberg's not far as well although we're going to deploy him now because he's lost he's got well he's just within a second as he's come around that corner so he should have DRS and we are Trying to make some moves here because Vettel, let's get on board with him again, is really hunting down Ocon and Russell, which is absolutely incredible for Sebastian Vettel to be doing this. I've got a feeling tyre wear. We're going to be worse than everyone else, but that's okay. I don't mind that. We've got our strategies. We know what we're doing. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're working as well. Go on, Seb. Now deploy the battery and get past that Alpine. You can do it. You can do it. Nico Hulkenberg losing pace to Bottas even with his battery. Okay, we may be... The Alfa Romeo's may be a struggle for us to attack. Although, oh, we get very close to the Alpine there. Can we get him on the inside? He's up against... Ah, oh, no, unlucky, Seb. Unlucky, not this time. This time, we may be good. As uh, uh, you can see, Esteban Ocon just driving in behind Lewis... Uh, no, George Russell to get the slipstream. But yeah, it's been a, a good battle. Ten laps in so far, and we are looking okay. Right, let's not completely deplete the battery there let's go back to nico we need to get him within a second of valtteri bottas he's not far off but he just needs to keep on working because if we can get right behind him it'll help him with his fuel saving as well and there is a bit of a train forming up there that bottas can't seem to get past and we're within a second we're within a second and i think that was the drs um detection zone as well so that should work out pretty well hopefully when we come back we've made some moves Oh, hello. It looks like we're making some moves now. Because Sebastian Vettel is having a look at Ocon. He dives right, dives left, and tries to get around the inside. Ocon's going to hold that inside line there. Get back into the slipstream. Ocon goes to defensive or maybe attacking against Hamilton. But surely in the next DRS zone, we're going to have Ocon because we're so close. We might get a double overtake. Oh, Lewis holds him off. But I think, again, I think on the next DRS, we're going to stick with this. Because on the next DRS, I think we're going to... Uh, we're going to be able to get potentially both of them because the DRS is going to open now. Hamilton doesn't have it. And he is struggling to defend from Ocon, but he does defend from us. We just run out of space. So let's um, let's use the overtake button and hope that that gets us past maybe a double overtake here. As, uh, in fact, let's put Nico in overtake as well because he's going to—he's not too far behind us, so he's going to be coming through this uh, through this lot as well. Come on, Seb, make this move, make this move on George. We've got to get that Alpine. That's who we want to be fighting in this constructors, really. We really want to be taking points off the Alpine and the Haas and uh, the McLaren. Generally, we're in a very good position at the moment in the constructors, and I don't want to be losing it. As uh, oh, George Russell goes very wide from that corner there. Put it in, Seb. Put it in. Get it used. Get it used. Hopefully, down this straight now. Deploy the battery. He's, he's trying. He's trying. It forced him a little bit off uh, Of course. George is now going to have the DRS, and Ocon won't. Ni uh, Nico has used up all of his ERS, trying to jump his positions. He's still in 13th, very close to Bottas. George Russell under pressure from us, who is also putting pressure on Esteban Ocon. And this is the moment that you really want to get this done. You want to come around here into this little technical section. Stay really close to them if we can. We'll put that back to neutral for now. And then again, we're going to try and get this done. And I'm wondering if we just go full deploy 
as we come around this corner and try and make these moves because I really want to get ahead of both these drivers. You can see trying to get the slipstream. Are we going to run out of space again? I think we are just, but we should have the inside line after this corner. We should have the inside line and therefore be in a good position to then get DRS off Russell and hopefully get him on this next long straight, although there's no DRS, but the RERS will be helping us out a lot. Vettel up to 8th, absolutely superb from him again. And uh, again, as we come around here, we'll just drop this into neutral. He can manage that himself for a little bit. But we have got Ocon. There's a yellow flag in Sector 2. Uh, is that anything crucial? I don't think so. Competitor locked up. It was Sonoda, who is, I think, not having a very good race and is well behind everyone. Yeah, right at the bottom. But uh, so far, so good for Aston Martin. So far, so good. How is Nico doing? Quick check on Nico. He's still chasing Valtteri Bottas to try and get past him. And... Uh, Guan Yu Zhou, who's down there as well. So let's quickly just use up all of his battery. To tr yeah, to try and get the uh, extra push after that corner. And may um, I just I think that I think the Alfa Romeos could pull away from us if we harvest. We'll try and harvest for a whole lap and see how that goes. Oh, Seb's had a shocker. He's locked up again on turn seven. What is it with Seb and locking up? As he's trying to make a move, he just goes too fast into that section. There's a run out road here, Seb. Just use that. But look, he's trying to find a clear place on track to come in. And he's coming in behind Nico Hulkenberg. So, oh, Seb. Seb, Seb, Seb. Come on. He's now three seconds off Nico. So we need to, we really need to make that up. So, Seb, get your ass moving. Oh, and now Nico's locked up as well. In the similar place. And he's just gone straight on. He's now going to lose this pack. And, well, Seb's now caught up to him, which is awesome. But... It's in the wrong situation because now there's three seconds to us and Bottas. Bloody hell. Maybe it's the tyres just going off a little bit, back a bit more than expected. But let's, you know, come on, boys. Right. <sighs> Nico, you need to pull yeah, Seb along. I'm very sorry, but it's just what you need to do right now. You need to play the teammate, get him in your DRS, pull him along, and um, get him. We need to get back to this pack. Come on. We're, we're relying on you, Nico. Right. So we're in the pit window for both drivers. And I'm sort of thinking potentially getting early. Try and close down, close up that gap. So if we just push really hard now. In fact, Seb's just got Seb's just overtaken him. So Seb's going to go. And I think because Seb's going to come in before Hulkenberg. So Seb's going to push on this lap. Hopefully drag Nico around with him through DRS and stuff. But um, yeah, it's just shocking driving from both drivers. Really is, really is. Now we're sort of relying on a safety car, both in the points. Well, Vettel very safely in the points, and Nico was pushing it, and now there's a five second gap to the Alfa Romeos in front of us, which is just awful. Okay, so we're on the in lap now for Seb, so he's going to come in onto those hards. Okay, box, box. And then box, Nico's box. going to stay out for one more lap, so we might as well get him pushing on his tyres as well now. He can go full send and probably, in fact, we. Mm, no, let's get him to full send when he's uh, when Vettel is in the pit. So the Hulkenberg has now got in front of him. What is going on with these two? I know I don't mind them battling, but boys, you're doing this the wrong way round. Come on, right? Seb is in. Seb is in the pits along with everybody else, which is really annoying because now Hulkenberg's staying out for one more lap, and he's not really got much left to do. So let's uh, we're just going to tell him to deploy the battery. He'll probably moan in a minute that it's run out. Pit options, onto the hards, pit this lap. Right, Vettel is in the pit. Is he going to jump anyone? Probably not. Our pit crew isn't the best. So, no, we're going to come out exactly behind all the people we were behind anyway. But it's more around the, uh, the aftermath of the pit stop, isn't it? Right, attack, push, neutral. We didn't manage to harvest anything on that in-lap. Ah, oh, right. Copy. Yeah, your tyres. We know it's your tyres that are kicking off. You're coming into pit, Hulky, Nico. Hulky? I've never called him Hulky before. But he is up to eight at the moment. I mean, that's going to fall away. But, uh, yeah, 27% tyres. 45 for Bottas. 49 for Perez. I assume Perez and Bottas are going to be in this lap as well. And then it's sort of everyone as they are. Although Ricardo needs to pit. Schumacher needs to pit. Magnussen needs to pit. And Norris. So, okay, Vettel's not completely out of this yet 
he's not completely out of this. Nico uh, will be coming in. We're watching a bit of Seb as he comes around. Let's jump to Nico so that we can see his uh, see his pit stop and see how that goes. Because, yeah, Bottas is in. We're trying to push Seb. So Seb can now get on the deploy, I think, and really make this work as Nico is into the pit lane. He gets on the brakes very sharpish so that he doesn't get a penalty for speeding in the pit lane. It's such a long pit lane here at Paul Ricard. Okay, right. Swing in. Nice quick stop. Get out. That's what we want. There's the Alfa Romeo who's in front of us. And the Bottas should keep the same uh, the same distance, really. It's 2.6. It's a good stop. It's a good stop from uh, for Nico. We're gonna come, we know we're going to come out behind behind Bottas. I mean, we should do, because Bottas only literally just pitted before us. Well, Bottas has beaten quite a few other drivers, and there is Sebastian Vettel going through. So, um, the Aston Martin, it didn't, it's not really done us any favours. We've got a four-second lead over Hulkenberg, so... Uh, can you argue the undercut for Seb worked against his teammate? Yeah, not too sure. 30 laps to go. Um, only a few people need to come into pit, so we'll probably come back when they're pitting and see how we do. Okay, so Ricardo, Norris, Magnussen and Schumacher all still out on quite low percentage tyres. So this could be very interesting because we've closed the gap quite a lot to the cars in front. So we can potentially jump a lot of drivers if they pit because they're only in a, a few of them are in this group here, right? That's just in front of us. So we're definitely going to jump them. It's just whether we've got enough about us to get past the other drivers as well. It's a 29 second pit stop, which is a long time to stop. So Magnussen, A, what's that, A14, let's call it 15, 16. Uh, yeah, we could, we could jump a lot of people. We could have done the undercut on a lot of people here, as we are still closing this gap on the, the pack with Joe at the bottom of it. So, yeah, let's see when Norris comes in. Okay, so some people are coming into pit. Verstappen and Hamilton have just pitted, so I'm assuming the McLarens will come in. No, they don't come in. They stay out again. Vettel's now caught up. We've massively caught up with this pack. Um, but we're, yeah, we're, we're well within this group now. We're not far off the points. And still, they stay out. 50%, 50%, 45% for Alonso. Leclerc into pit now. Sonoda behind us, 47. Ricardo 49 there is a yellow flag in sector three, but I don't think it's a safety car. So Leclerc is in. Surely the McLarens can't run much more on these tyres. Now Alonso's into pit after running wide on turn 11. So this is the one we wanted to see. Alonso's going to have 29 seconds. Hulkenberg overtakes Ricardo, which is awesome. So yeah, lots of people coming into pit now. This is the moment to pounce, chaps. Come on. Come on. Right, let's we could really, really push through here. Hulkenberg jumping up. Vettel into 13th. Is there still people in that group in front of us that haven't pitted? Schumacher still hasn't pitted. So he's really the only one we're going to jump. So we are going to have to do some overtakes to get this work in. And I think we've been pushing our tyres a little bit harder than anticipated. So it could be a bit of management at the end. But I feel like if we're in a big DRS train, which we currently are, we can probably harvest for a lap. And then utilize that harvest with deploy and try and we'll try and get into the points positions. There's not twenty there's only twenty laps to go. It's 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 an interesting race, this one. Okay, we've been harvesting for a lot of laps, so let's see what Vettel can do. We're gonna get on board with him. And we're gonna oh right on a straight as well. We're gonna deploy. We're gonna deploy there as well. And we're gonna see if we can get past. Now the tires are my only concern with just about yeah, eighteen laps to go. But uh hopefully we can get through on this one. And really make this work because we need to jump Schumacher because Ocon is pulling away from Joe. And that is a, a concern for points paying positions. Schumacher still has to pit as well. So, yeah, he's still not come in. And I don't think anyone ahead. No, nah, it's all it's all a bit of a nothing. I mean, a safety car would be huge. Maybe a change in weather, but I don't think that's coming. So, yeah, well done Vettel. Up to 12th. Now you just got to get Joe as well. We're... Massively going to deploy. Hopefully, Hulkenberg can get him as well. He is going to come through. We're sort of pulling each other through at the moment, which is absolutely awesome. So, we should see Nico just behind us. 12th and 13th for the Aston Martins at the moment. And uh, we're not far off getting Joe 
and potentially Ocon, and then that gap up between Ocon and Bottas, two seconds. I don't know if we're ever going to close that down, but look at the power of this Aston Martin in a straight line. It is absolutely quality with the DRS, keeping up with that Ferrari-based Alfa Romeo. We have now got Ocon, I think, just. Is Nico following us through? He's trying. He's trying. The, uh, the Alpine holds on of Esteban Ocon, but it does mean we're in a good position for the uh, the next straights just after this corner. So I'm hoping that we can make this work because if we can pull, again, pull both drivers through. Come on, Nico, keep up. Open the DRS, pull out to the side. Alpine comes out as well. Can we get both of them? I think we're going to get both of them. We should have space. We do have space. And Sebastian Vettel is back into the points. Did Nico get through? No, but he significantly closed the gap on... Uh, Onto Ocon and Joe. So there is Nico. He's going to get his foot down on this straight now. Come on. Come on, Nico. Keep working hard. You can take it flat. You can take it flat. Don't lift. Oh, he's had to back out. He's had to back out just a little bit. And uh, Vettel looking like he was about to run wide, but just caught it. Well done, Seb. But now we really do need Nico to. Uh, to pull this back because Joe's half a second behind us now, so we are. We, I mean, we're we're gaining on Bottas. We just. Uh, it would be ideal if Nico could come through as well. We're going to drop this down to neutral because we're going to lose all of our charge. As is Nico, unfortunately. Yeah, I maybe could have. I maybe could have harvested some energy with Nico in that moment, but for now, I'm I'm just happy that Vettel is back into the points because I feel like I can manage it from here. And hopefully make this work. Okay, so we've done some tactical ERS management, which means we've lost a couple of places to Joe and Ocon again. But we're in a very, very good position to um, to have a lot of battery for potentially a couple of laps. We're up basically 100%. So I'm feeling like if we can get this done right, we can get both drivers through because they've both got DRS. So in the first DRS zone, the start and finish straight, we're not going to deploy. We're going to deploy down this long straight here all the way and try and utilize that as best we can. And we're right on the arse of the Alfa Romeo. And Hulkenberg is with us as well. So hopefully we can get both drivers through. Seb pulls out to the side. I'm wondering, do we do a press does? And Seb, not even with the deployment of ERS, has got both of them. As easy as that. Easy as you like. What is Nico doing? Come on, Nico. You've got to be brave. You've got to be brave, son. Get that foot down. We're going to get you around this corner and then you're going to deploy because we want you to join Seb and just drive off into the distance. That is all we want you to do. Come around this corner. Right, get it on to deploy. Hulk, Nico, you use everything, son. You use absolutely everything. Okay, we've got a great gap there from Vettel to Ocon, who will catch him up because of DRS, but we need Nico to make a move. He needs to get around at least the Alfa Romeo on this bit of straight and he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. Right, I think we just say, Seb, you've got to pull away now. You've got your battery. Use it. Use right, Nico uses it. Gets around Joe. Come on, really get in line with that Alpine as well, Nico. And we can manage you to get you around here. Right, neutral. You don't need to drop it off here. Because what we don't want is Ocon to hold on to Seb. If Seb can go, then that's fine. And we'll just let Seb go. And we'll let Nico battle with Ocon. But... Because the, the key is trying to get in the points, right? And that is that means... Oh, Vettel is in the points. He's overtaken Ocon, so he's in, he is 10th. But, yeah, we need to get closer to Bottas right, and away from Ocon rather than anything else. So, Seb... Uh, Seb will put into neutral here. Right, Nico, you've got to go for it now, mate. In fact, both of you, go for it. Go for it, because you're going to get the DRS on Ocon, who's going to get it on Seb. So, we need to get as close as possible for the next section because Seb's holding him up and Nico oh nearly nearly Nico nearly right you go into neutral Seb Nico you keep deploying you keep deploying we've got to get you back in that well you're in within a second which is good as Esteban Ocon's trying to make a move you can, I love the fact we can see battles from the back of the other Aston Martin and the front of Nico it's really good to see Right, again, Seb, we're just going to have to make sure that Esteban doesn't get round him. So we're going to have to deploy. Okay, Seb looks like he's going in to defend. And Esteban's going to get in with the DRS. That's not too much of an issue. Nico does pull up, though, which is fine. 
I think we've got enough about us here to get round to get round Esteban. How are the tyres looking? A little bit under for Seb. Seb's going to need some management at some point. But yeah, I feel like we're going to get Esteban with one of our drivers before the end of the race. We have managed the ERS reasonably well. So, yeah, Nico's closing the gap here. In fact, we could have a double overtake on the next DRS, which would be awesome if we can get two Astins past the Alpine in the same position, and then we use each other to put each other along. That is what we want. That's the dream. So we're going to come round this final technical section into the right-hander onto the start-finish straight. We're so close to, uh, to Ocon now. Right. Seb has a little look, but now he's got the DRS. Surely he's going to get this done. We've, I mean, Nico has just dumped all of his battery there. Come on, Nico. Come on, Nico. Get round him. Make it stick. Oh, he can't make it stick. He needs to be braver. He just needs to be braver. He's trying to use that ERS to get round him. But just can't, can't make it work. And now we're going to have to let Seb just go. I think Seb has to try and break this toe. So, Seb, you deploy everything you've got. In fact, use all your tyres. We'll manage that later on, mate. It's fine. We'll, we'll deal with the tyres towards the end. There's, not, there's only eight laps left. Let's push it. Go, Seb. Go, go, go. In fact, Nico, go, go, go as well. Do everything we can to get this bloody Alpine behind both of our cars. I know your tyres are slightly overheating, but it's because I've asked you to push. I need you to work hard here, Seb. I need you and those tyres to work hard. Because the Alpine now, hopefully, doesn't have the pace. That's it, Nico. That's it, Nico. Right, Seb, you can go down to aggressive. Drop back a bit. Come on, Nico. Oh, he's trying. Copy. He just can't make that move stick. Right, we really need Vettel to pull away now. Half a second is the gap to Ocon. Oh, it's just, he's just not getting away, is he? He's just not pulling away. And I think Nico is now going to be left behind in this race. Get the tyres down now. Yeah, we're going to have to do the tyre wear management, which I think means yeah, Ocon might get the final point paying yeah. position in this race with seven laps to go. Oh, yeah, o look at that. Ocon and Vettel just pulling away. So I think it's going to be a one-driver one management situation now where we use... Um, we just try and secure Vettel the 10th the place and a point in the championship again. So two, two, three laps to go now, and we've put a huge, like over a second gap to back to Hulkenberg. So he's, uh, he can just basically get to the end of the race. He's going to get us a bonus for finishing above where he started, which is fine. But Vettel is still battling with Ocon, as you can see. We're just riding on the back of Sebastian Vettel here, and at the moment he is holding him off. But we need to plan this so that we get DRS at the right point, because I think for pace we're slightly quicker. Than the Alpine. Right, Holkenberg can hang on the back of um, Joe, hopefully, with DRS, and then uh, potentially we can harvest with him as well. I'm sort of thinking if we can just manage this to hang on the back of Esteban Ocon and charge our battery and conserve our tyres, we're going to be in a very good position with, uh, with Sebastian Vettel come to the last lap. That's all we need to do. Just be in DRS for Ocon in the last lap and we'll get him. We'll get him and we'll make it stick. That's my, that's my thinking. Uh, Hulkenberg looks like he's got 13th place sewn up. He's 25 seconds ahead of Magnussen. He's still in with a chance of getting Joe. Right, there we go. We'll let him go. Three more laps. Three and uh, hopefully rein him in for the next DRS zone and then stay behind him. Just make sure we're within that second. That's all we've got to do with Seb. Okay, so we're in a bit of an issue here. Fit lap 53 of 53 um, for the leaders. And we are out of a second of Ocon and we're trying our hardest to bring him in. Tire wear is an issue for both drivers. Nico is still on the back of Joe, but can't get past him. But yeah, we uh, we need to get back in range of Ocon. And I just don't think it's quite going to happen. We'll see in this sort of technical area. I'm worried about the tire wear, but 11th and 13th isn't bad. But yeah, I think we've uh, we've struggled a bit with the tire wear. We've struck, we, we could have had a chance to pull away. Both drivers locked up, and we ended up in 13th and 14th. We did jump some places with an undercut in the strategy, but yeah, I think we uh, we wave goodbye to Esteban Ocon as our pace drops off. 1.4 seconds ahead of Joe. So this is now going to be our final lap of the Grand Prix. And um, yeah, I'm going to suggest that Esteban Ocon is going to get that final points-paying position in this race 
I mean, if Nico could get Zhou here, this would be nice. This is probably the battle to watch on the last lap. So this is last lap. Last lap, you can push the tyres. You can push the tyres, apparently, but I don't want to risk it too much. Although Zhou is rapidly gaining on us, so we'll deploy that as well. Zhou is now within a DRS of Vettel, which is a little bit of a concern. So let's keep let's keep the fight on with Nico. Let's get him on aggressive and get his tyres working hard as well. We think we can lean on the tyres more. So let's uh, let's see if we can make this work. Vettel, I don't think, is under too much pressure from Zhou. We are deploying all of our battery on the last lap. And hoping that we uh, that we get through this. Right, let's really just use these tyres up now. I know they're at 25% and whatnot, yeah. but it is the final lap and we need to work this hard. It's, it makes a difference 11, uh, 12, 11th and 12th rather than 11th and 13th. It's pride for Aston Martin, who are, should be down here somewhere. But uh, I feel like we're, we're, we've run this race well. We've uh, we've put some good drivers under pressure. If, if Nico could... If Nico could qualify well... We'd be in such a better position. We really would. I think I really hope Joe doesn't get us on this last turn here from Vettel. That would be heartbreaking as Vettel is trying to defend him. I think Vettel has done enough because I don't think Nico's going to get the Alfa Romeo here. Vettel gets his foot down. He's defending for his life on the last little bit of stretch of road, and Joe got him on the line. Joe got him on the line with DRS. So it's 12th and 13th for Aston Martin. Look at that. Interval, 0.000. Oh, Seb has been screwed twice in this race by finishing at exactly the same time as someone else. But we didn't get any points. It's the first race in a while that we haven't got points. But 12th and 13th, so we get the bonus for both both drivers finishing above. Both drivers top 15 as well, which is awesome. But, um, yeah, how how irritating. Joe Guanyu got us on the last lap. With DRS. Unbelievable. Esteban Ocon drop one. Valtteri Bottas. At the top though. Double Ferrari. Double Red Bull. Mercedes. Pierre Gasly holding on to sixth. Really well good done there. George Russell falling to eighth. He won't be happy with that one. Uh, in the drivers then. Charles Leclerc takes over from Max Verstappen. They swap places. But it's all very close at the top. It goes Ferrari Red Bull. Ferrari Red Bull. Lewis Hamilton is ahead of his teammate George Russell. Valtteri Bottas is ahead of Fernando Alonso. Pierre Gasly jumps over Sebastian Vettel because he didn't score any points in this one. Uh, Nico Hülkenberg is down in 15th and Lance Stroll is bottom. Uh, in the constructors, no change for anyone. Alfa Romeo get a two-point advantage over us now, so it stretches to 19 points. And Alfa Tauri are now level with us, as so they scored eight points in that race. So it looks like Alfa Tauri are becoming our main rivals this season, it would seem. So a good payout this month as well. We give uh, Nico Hülkenberg his bonus 250 grand for finishing 13th or higher, and he finished 13th. Uh, but we do get quite a lot of uh, lovely bonuses from this one. Reach Q2, finishing position, position gain, and qualifying position all pay out. So we take home $4 million, which is absolutely epic. So next up is the Hungaro ring in Hungary. Um, the board review is coming. The current board currently have high confidence in your leadership as team principal. Uh, but this may change before the formal review. You can find a breakdown of our assessment in the meantime in the link below. So uh, the official board review is in seven days. We exceeded expectations again at the Paul Ricard circuit. And uh, yeah, it all went pretty well, didn't it? It all went pretty damn well. Happy with that one. So looking at the drivers then, um, Vesti has another point to go into. Uh, I sort of feel like we have to just get his braking up. But we may switch between braking and cornering because pace is key. We need pace. What is that? Uh, an ability to follow the racing line as accurately as possible. This reduces the chance of a driver losing time or their car taking damage from running wild while racing. That would be useful as well. But I feel like we need to get breaking up into the 70s and then we can start looking at uh, everything else as well. But yeah, Vesti getting a number of development points, which is, which is good to see. Because we still don't know what the situation is for drivers next year. Um, is Seb willing to talk again? He is. He's got medium patience at the moment. So... I feel like where he, we know he wanted more, 14 million. I mean, compare that to Nico, who we're paying 5 million, and Vesti, who we're paying 1 million. So, I mean, Seb's having a, he's, he's getting a big old whack of money there, isn't he? He really is. Okay, we have designed our third iteration of the front wing, which will definitely be uh, manufactured now, so we can get that on the car. Let's manufacture uh, four of them. If we rush them, we get two and four days, which I think means they'll both go on the next car for 600,000. Yes, please. Lovely stuff. 
And then I quite like how the car's performing this year, so we're going to do a bit more research to try and counteract some of this. So I think for the front wing, we could go for that. We need to make sure that we've got a good... I want to do one of these, I think. Let's go for the chassis. Let's try and repair the chassis. So uh, we get a minus 5% reduction, minus 5% in engine cooling, and minus 5% in airflow by the... Um, the new rules that are coming into play, the regulation changes. So let's plow quite, let's see if we can, how much do we need to counteract that? It needs to go to 56.2. Yeah, okay, we're using up quite a lot of hours there. So let's put that like that. We'll put a little bit more, oh, we're, we're using so much stuff. When it's 41 days as well, so we need to be wary of other, other projects we're going to want to run. So 55 nearly negates all of that, nearly negates all of that, nearly negates all of that. And the research benefit gets us 4.3. Okay. I think we go for that. I think we go for that. For the research focus, can we still... Ah, yes. Okay. So that allows us to cover off all of this stuff. Right. Cool. Continue that. We'll put um, four engineers on it. Because I think we're five engineers. 28 days. Okay. 130 grand. Bargain. Absolute bargain. Thank you very much. We'll take it. So we have scouted uh, Guan Yu Zhou. He's only on 550,000... Uh, a month now could he be the man that joins Aston Martin uh, it could be him it could be Yehan Daruvla who we've also uh, scouted who well he's on a salary of 383,000 75 rated isn't too bad currently in F2 from India 75 rated is not bad like, he would be probably quite a good reserve driver although aggression low growth potential average I'm not yeah that doesn't that doesn't fill me with confidence. Uh, what else have we got here in the inbox then? We're in for quite a race weekend at Hungary. And uh, Yuki Sonoda has also been completely scouted. 1.49 million, 77 rated. What was Joe? 80. Yeah, Joe looks like the uh, the potent, maybe the one to go for. Growth potential average, but high aggression. I do I do like my drivers with high aggression. I'm not going to lie. What was uh, Sonoda looking like? So Sonoda... Average and high. Yeah, okay. I think one of those... I think there's potential. Let me know down below. What do you think? Joe or uh, or Sonoda? Could one of them join? I mean, Sonoda's been not the best when we've actually raced against him. He's spun quite a lot. But, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Two days until the Hungarian Grand Prix, which will be the next episode. So make sure you're here for that one. And, um, right, race prep. Not fussed about that. It is the race weekend, which will be the next episode. So make sure you tune in. We'll be racing around Hungary, and hopefully we can get Aston Martin back in the points. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.